Okay, it's finally time for me to get these pressure treated posts in the ground. There's gonna be five across the front of the shop here, five along the side where the new barn's gonna be, and then five across the back. My goal for the next couple of days is to try and get all these posts set and ready to go. So regardless of what happens with the weather, um, I can keep building the barn, building the, the front and back uh, covers for the shop. After I drilled that first hole down about three feet, um, I ran the auger right by the sewer line, and that's exactly 10 feet wide. So I was kind of hoping to do a 10 foot overhang. I think now I'm gonna need to do a 12 foot overhang. If the sewer line's here, that means the septic system's sitting somewhere right in here. And uh, I don't want any conflict with either the septic system or the leach field as I set these posts. So I think I'm gonna have to move it out to 12 feet. Paralysis of analysis is a real thing. I typically get to a point after putting way too much thought into some of these projects when I just decide to dive in. The thing that I constantly think about on the front of the shop is the septic system. You will see here shortly that the septic tank sits right out in front of the shop, but I still want some sort of an awning slash carport slash whatever you want to call it over the front of the shop. Because that door is the only real entrance into the shop, I need to find a way to keep the snow away from the front door. I talked about this last year in the middle of winter, but on top of that, Cedar and or the kids walk this way to feed the animals in the morning. So again, I need to keep the snow clear from the walkway. Once we do have this entire area covered, I can keep the side-by-side, four-wheelers, or anything else that may need a little protection from the weather underneath this awning. I've contemplated a couple different ways installing these 6x6 pressure treated posts. I considered pouring a footing 36 inches deep, then putting a Simpson bracket and setting the post on the bracket, which would have definitely been a great way to keep the post from rotting out over the years. But instead, I opted to put the post four feet in the ground and concrete around it, which probably won't last as long as the first way would, but either way, it should outlast me.
for whatever reason, I like the idea of having the post four feet in the ground versus the footing. As you can see across the front of the shop is not perfectly level. I put a three foot, four foot and five foot mark on the bottom of the posts so I can pull a string line from end to end, put a string level on it and get those posts as close to level regardless of how much might be sticking out of the ground. Once I got the two end posts set, I'll use the string line and the marks to get the rest of the posts set evenly. Back in the old days, I probably would have dry packed the concrete and then slowly let the water trickle in and around the posts for a day or two but the concrete is definitely stronger when it's mixed wet and poured in. The goal is to have close to four feet of the post in the ground, leaving eight feet exposed. I will then put a beam across the top of the posts, bringing the height up closer to nine feet. I will then set the two by 10 by 14s at the 412 pitch, matching the shop. I've talked about this before, but we have a limited amount of flat ground right here around the house. So every square inch that can be used we will likely use in some way, shape, or form. If we'd had a flat piece of ground, all of this would have been much easier. But it is what it is, and we're going to make the best of what we have to work with. There are a lot of pole barns in the area, and typically when a pole barn is built, the same thing is done with the pressure-treated posts. Six by six posts are placed in the ground, then the pole barn is built around these posts. I considered building the shop that way because it would have been much cheaper, but I worried about the snow load. Building the shop the way that I did, I'm no longer concerned about the snow load, but this front awning will absorb any snow that slips off the shop, so it has to be built very well.
Ruby, whose team you want? You player two or no? The days are still warm enough that shooting a game of basketball with Reed is always something I enjoy doing. Jeez, 21! High five. Okay, I gotta keep working. Good job, buddy. Soon enough, we're going to have enough snow on the ground where it's going to be hard to get outside and do something like this. One of the benefits of growing up in Arizona was the simple fact that I never had to shovel the driveway in order to play a game of 21 with my brothers. That level? Yes. Are you sure? Precise? Exact? Look once. Don't look twice. <laughs> Is your head leaning this way? Step, step on whatever rock I have to. Okay, now what? So it's going to be about uh, on the low side. After I put the beam across the top, it's going to be probably eight, nine feet out of the, uh, out of the ground. And then I'm going to do the same pitch as the roof. So I didn't want to go way up in the air. I have to put, I put these four feet in the ground. And, and what's this for? Where are you going to put your? I just don't want snow to be, this, this is the only entrance we have into the shop. Okay. I could put a trailer here. I could put four wheelers here. I could put a My million. Car? Yeah. You could totally park your car here to keep it out of the snow if you wanted to. Oh, should I say Jeep, not car? Your Jeep, sorry. <laughs> But it's 12, I, I initially was going to do 10 feet, and I drove down right there, and I hit the corner of the septic tank. Oops, so that's I, not good. So I hope the last two holes I have to drill, I don't think. So the septic tank is right here, Then the distribution box is out there a little ways. So I really hope I don't get into conflict with the, uh, um, the there's one leech line that goes around that tree, but whatever. So once this is done, then... Hopefully tomorrow you can help me on the barn side, set the barn posts. Okay. Did you hurt your back, your shoulder? Yeah, it's heavy. They're heavy. So. Cal, we're over here. Cal, it's Callie's birthday today. What did you get for your birthday? Harry Potter stuff. Harry Potter, everything. That's all you want. <laughs> Hedwig. Hedwig. From Build a Bear. I don't even know what that is. But. Build an owl. <laughs> You're happy with it? Yeah. And what are you doing tonight for your birthday? We're going to like the haunted house. A haunted house? Yeah. Haunted it's like a hollow. Haunted, haunted, haunted hollow? Maze thing. Haunted, haunted yeah. maze? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Congratulations, you made it to 11. Thanks. I think you like. Congratulations, you're taller than your mom. You're 11. I think you can start paying rent here pretty quick. No. I no. Have no. No? No. Okay. Okay, have fun. Okay. Are we fun. leaving? Bye. I picked that auger up over a year ago, and then I bought an 18 inch extension for it. And that's been a great tool to have around here, especially with the hillside projects. I have a 10 inch auger bit and a four inch auger bit that I can rotate back and forth between as I need them.
but in this situation I'm using the 10 inch auger and then I'm digging out around the post as needed to make sure I get a lot of concrete around that pressure treated lumber. I made an effort to compact the ground underneath the post before setting the posts down in the hole, but I also put two bricks underneath every post so the post is not in direct contact with the ground. This should also slow down any rotting in these pressure treated posts. Babe, you turn the water off for me? What? Turn the water off for me? I definitely tried to take my time to make sure that all of the posts were plumb and square with the building, but I also have another 10 of these posts that I have to set. I will put five more where the goat slash chicken coop is now, and then I will put five more across the back of the shop. The two end ones in the middle when I was able to get four feet into the ground. That was, that's what I was trying to do. The other two, this one I hit the side of the, or the corner of the septic tank. And that one was getting close to the, um, the distribution box for the septic system. So I got them both 36 inches into the ground, which is plenty, but I was, I was tr hoping to get them four feet in the ground but we will have a 12 foot uh, covered area right here. And more than anything, we won't have any snow up against the front of the shed from now on. Tomorrow, I'm gonna get the five posts set for the new goat barn. Uh, and if all goes well, maybe I, I'll even get the uh, five set for the back too as well. And then we're off to the races. Once the concrete dries, which shouldn't take more than a couple of days, we can start framing, so. I let the post sit overnight. The concrete set up quite a bit. I'm gonna pull a, a string across the top cut them off perfectly even, make sure everything's even. Then I'm gonna pull the two by fours off and then I've gotta get on the, uh, the 94 Dodge and pull the front winch off. My brother-in-law is gonna be here this afternoon to pick it up and I've gotta get it ready to go. Again, to clarify, two of the five posts are about 36 inches deep in the ground, while the other three are 48 inches deep in the ground. After setting those posts on the bricks down in the hole, I put as much concrete around the posts as I could. And once the awning is built over the top of these posts, there should be very little water or moisture that gets around them. I've even considered doing some stone work around those posts, kind of for fun, but also to protect them a little bit from the elements.
After letting the post sit overnight and letting that concrete set up just a bit, I carefully pulled the braces and the stakes out of the ground, but I will let that concrete set up for a few more days before I set the beams on top of the posts and start the framing process. As far as my 94 second gen Dodge truck is concerned, I really love the truck. But about a month ago, I sold the truck. And the deal I made was I got to keep the wheels and tires, the toolbox and bed tank, and the worn winch, which I will put on the Dodge Dually now. My brother-in-law came up from Arizona for the weekend, and he'll be hauling the truck back, so I have to get it ready for him. As much as I've loved using that second-gen Dodge truck, I'm really looking forward to running that dually around for a while. The worn Xeon winch on the front of that truck, I've used probably a couple of hundred times since I installed it on that truck. And I know that's something I will use again. I'm not sure what winch bumper I will do on the first gen Dodge, but one way or another, I have to get that winch mounted on the front of that truck before I find myself needing it. I've literally used that winch for everything you can think of. I once had to chain this truck up to an existing tree to winch somebody out of a snowbank that had slid off our road while driving way too fast. And I thought for sure there's no way I'm gonna be able to pull them out. The end result is that 12,000 pound worn winch more than did their job. And hopefully I don't have to winch anybody out like that again, but it'll be nice to know that I have it if I need it. This coming Wednesday's video will be all about getting ready to start on the barn. Drive safe.